these examples uh, we'll make a point of working through from start to finish. Uh, there's a number of steps involved, kind of one simple calculation of a summary statistic, potentially then two hypothesis tests to get to the conclusion that the model we can construct is valid. So we'll start off kind of following that sort of three-step process that we outlined. We can first use the simple regression, simple linear regression tool. to generate just the correlation coefficient. So we've got a lot of information here, but the first thing we're just going to look at for this data is the correlation coefficient of 0 0.947. So our Internet Explorer market share and US homicide rate data has a positive correlation. So the correlation coefficient for this data is R equals 0 0.9477. So these variables share a strong positive linear correlation or association. So what we'll do is test the claim that these variables share a positive association or a positive linear association using the following hypotheses. So our null hypothesis will always be that the slope equals zero, which again means no association exists. In this case, our alternative hypothesis will be that the slope is greater than zero since our correlation coefficient was a positive value. So to actually test that claim, what we'll do is stay in the same tool. We'll select edit to go back to this screen so that we can edit our hypothesis tests. There's actually two listed here, one for the intercept, one for the slope. We're not worried about the test for intercept. So all we'll do is update the hypothesis for the slope so that the alternative statement is greater than zero and click compute. So again, there's a lot of information output on this screen because StatCrunch is designed to be a very professional tool for statistics. But there's only a single number that we're interested in here. So we're looking at this bottom table. And for our model, we have a p-value of 0 0.0142. So that's the p-value for our test. So the p-value is... 0 0.0142, which in this case is less than our value for alpha, which equals 0 0.05. So we reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the slope is greater than 0. So again, in the context of the data, this means there's sufficient evidence to conclude that these two variables share a positive linear correlation. So the first condition is met. Now we need to assess the normality of our residuals. And we'll do that by testing the following hypotheses. The null hypothesis that our residuals come from a normally distributed population. And the alternative hypothesis that our residuals come from a non-normally distributed population. So we'll stay in the same screen, but go back to that edit menu one more time. If we scroll down in this list of options, what we're going to see is this save box. So what we're going to do is select save residuals. Click compute again. We don't actually need any of the new information in this output. We've already 
looked at the p-value, the correlation coefficient, but what we have is a new column in our spreadsheet called residuals. So that's the residuals, the predicted versus observed values, or the difference between those, for our data. So we can select stat, goodness of fit, to access the Shapiro-Wilk normality test, and conduct that test on our data set of residuals. So what we did is just save ourselves some time rather than having to compute all those by hand. We can output them automatically and click compute. In this case, we get a p-value of 0.2619, which is in this case greater than our value for alpha. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that our data or that our residuals come from a normally distributed population. So we've concluded that our two variables do share a positive linear correlation. We've concluded that the residuals come from a normally distributed population. So in this case, since both conditions are met, we know that the linear model which we can access again from this regression screen. So y equals 3.45, well, let's just call it y equals 3.45, plus 0.03x is a valid model for our data. The predictions of any future or unknown values based off this model will be reliable. So again, kind of a lengthy process, but now we know we have a linear regression model that we could use to make valid predictions. So let's take a look at another example. In this case, we have the rank of legendary songs, greatest songs of all time according to Rolling Stone magazine, and the number of weeks those songs remained on the billboard charts. So using alpha equals 0 0.1, we want to see if a linear model is appropriate for this data. So again, using the regression, the simple linear regression tool, we can select our two variables and click compute to get that correlation coefficient, which in this case is negative 0 0.41. So negative 0 0.41, meaning these variables share a, I don't know, we could call it moderate, negative linear association. So negative, meaning that they change in opposite ways. So the longer a song was on the charts, the lower actually that it is on this list. So negative 0.41 isn't an incredibly strong value, but it's not quite zero. So we'll go ahead and test the claim that these two variables share a negative linear association using the following hypotheses. So our null hypothesis will be that the slope is equal to zero and our alternative will be that the slope is something less than zero, since in this case our correlation statistic was negative. So again, coming back, we'll change our slope to be less than for that alternative statement and click compute. Here we get a p-value of 0 0.2099. which in this case is greater than our alpha value, which is 0 0.1. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that the slope equals 0. So in the context of the data, that means there is not sufficient evidence
So there's not sufficient evidence to discredit the original assumption that these two variables do not share a correlation. So since there is no linear correlation between these two populations, the linear model would not be valid. And that's it, we stop there, because there's no point in constructing a linear model or trying to make predictions based off a model that would be inaccurate. So since our data fails that first condition, or I, yeah, since that, our data fails that first condition, we conclude that there is no linear association, then we just stop this process.